Hey, what's up front seaters? Sean Provence here with the Path Real Estate team and this is my bro, Dylan Provence from the Path Real Estate team. We have been in this really cool uh, kind of pivotal moment in our business where we're stepping away from just being the group that provides people with you know, leads and short-term opportunities and we're really focusing on coaching people to a more long-term vision. And we've been spending a ton of time going through every single um, one of our teammates and helping them structure a one year, three year, five year, and 10 year plan. And we just kind of had this aha where we realized that having this in place is such a foundational piece to actually getting to where you're trying to go um, that we decided to do a video on it. And uh, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about this tool that we use. Um, it was first shared with us by our broker years ago. And I really think that it's been like a, a life changer for me. I know like, for example, I've, I've got my pilot's license now because of this. I wrote down on this four years, years ago that I was gonna get it. And it, so the tool is called a 135, a one year, three year, five year planning sheet. And it's like blindingly simple, but it's so powerful if you use it right. Okay. So um, basically you have columns left to right that represent life categories that you could set goals in. And then as you move down, on ours we've got it broken out page after page because I we like to put a lot on it and we got horrible handwriting skills. We do. But <laughs> um, you could do it all on one page. It depends how much you have to put and how big you're writing it. It doesn't matter. But as you go down, it represents multiple years. So like top of the page would be goals for next year. The next page would be all your goals for the year after and, and so on and so forth. Um, Take us through the categories, Dylan. Talk, talk to us about this. Because okay. I know that you so, have an opinion on the yeah, order and just, stuff. Just to let you guys know that you can find a lot of different ones online. Um, I'm sure Keller Williams has a, like a sanctioned, a, approved one. I, I don't think this is it. But um, in general, my belief surrounding it is that it should go from order of importance, from left to right, and it goes chronologically down. So page one would be year one. Uh, page two would be year two. It's a little bit of a deceptive name. It's a one, three, five. Not to be confused with the GPS. Now, I know that Kellerisms, there's a 135, and then some people call the GPS a 135 as well, a goal, priorities, and strategies, because it's one goal, three priorities, five strategies for each priority. It's not the same thing. That is a GPS, this is a 135. So I just want to clean up that language. And if you're five. having trouble talking to someone and the language is getting confused, I just always put the word year in there. I feel like this is your 135 year plan. Yes, perfect. And there's no disputing it. We both know what we're talking about. So, so basically, Sean and I were actually debating a little bit before we got started here about uh, what the first one should be, and he totally won the debate because I I felt that on the left side here, it usually says family, and my argument was that, well, of course, that's what everyone's thing is going to be, but I was truly projecting because family is my, uh, my one on my left because that is the, the, the thing that I do everything else for. But basically, I'll just read you through. So... This one is... Uh, well, hold on. What, what did we settle on? Because you never gave them that. Oh, I apologize. We, it should be tied to your big Y. It should be tied to your big Y. So whatever is on the left here needs to be the your raison d'etre. Like the reason that you are doing all of this extra work. Because guys, let's face it. Real estate is tough. It's not uh, wake up, do nothing, make a bit of money business. It's, you know, feast or famine for a lot of people. And it can be very challenging. In order to make this life make sense, you need to be kind of very successful. I, I believe that. Yeah. So um, the typical way it's laid out is it is laid out family, spirituality, which is whatever it means to you, um, health, growth, business, and wealth. Now, you can alter this any way that you want, but like I said, it should really start with, on the left, it should be the most important thing. Uh, spirituality uh, can mean either religion or whatever uh, that means to you. Um, health is incredibly critical for everyone, whether they're willing to look at it or not. And I think it's really important to have it on 135 because if you are thinking about a life plan and you don't have some sort of health health plan, I, I just don't know how you could debate that it's not a big hole in your plan. I mean, if you wreck this one, you don't have anywhere else to live. Exactly correct. Growth is pretty straightforward. This wouldn't be you growing in inches. Um, it means you growing as a person, so this would be education, events you want to go to, uh, anything along those lines. Uh, business, I mean, this one typically is all we ever talk about, so I won't go into that. Wealth, and I actually, uh, yeah, out of respect for the uh, the Red Book Two coming out, MREA Two, um, I know that they're adding philanthropy on the end, so I added charity to mine. I thought that it was uh, that's great. Yeah, it was a, it was the perfect left one. But again, I have to say that it starts on the left hand side being the most important, 
and then goes this way. The right hand side of the page truly is what the left hand side is funding. So I want to be clear about that. Awesome. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is that it starts on year one. However, I recommend that when you're filling it out, you actually start in year 10 because you want to know, you want to start with the end in mind. You want to know where you're going before you start making plans. I'll just use the example of making a deck. You're never going to lay the floorboards first. You're going to build the foundation, but you need to know what the deck's going to look like when you're done to be able to design it properly. And that's what starting with the end in mind does for it. The one thing that I would say to that though, is I think there could be an exception to that if it's your first couple years in the business and you're just in keep the lights on mode. Like for us, when we do these for our business, um, we start with 10 years because the lights are on. Right. So it's not like we're going out of business next year. So what would you recommend for a new agent then? They just I, I would do one, one, then jump to 10, then fill it in backwards. Fine. Great idea. That makes a ton of sense. You know, because yeah, your, yeah. your one year goal is going to, you know, a lot of times it's just going to be like get 80,000 bucks yeah. so that I can keep paying the babysitter and the, yeah, that, you, that know, makes the a lot of sense. you know, the dog walk or whatever. You, so that would be the only thing that I would say. Um, but definitely begin with the end in mind because the cool thing is, um, if you know where you need to be in five years, for example, um, all of a sudden filling in two, three, and four is really kind of easy. Totally. Because you're like, well, if I want to be here in 10 years, I know that the halfway mark will be probably a little less than halfway because we'll scale up. And, you know, in order to get to, you know, 40 out of 100, I need to have 20 in year two kind of thing. So you start to build the blocks um, and then filling in the growth column becomes really easy. So uh, that would be what I would say. Start with a 10 year um, big Y and then you build, fill the rest in from left to right going backwards. Does yeah. that make sense? I agree completely. I also agree completely. Um, so Dylan, how do you figure out what your 10 year goal is? Uh, well, I, there's an exercise actually that I just heard today from one of our incredible teammates, Minar. She reminded me that in bold, what they do is they basically take you on like kind of this weird hippy dippy guided medica meditation sort of thing. And it basically talks about the fact that, uh, oh, let's just do it. Close your eyes, please. Basically, um, you're in a beautiful park and you see someone, but you're alone in the park, but there's someone ahead on the trail and physically they're a similar size to you and sort of similar coloring. So because you're alone in the park, you decide to chase after them and you're following them down the path. And as you're getting closer, they're looking more and more like you. And there's this feeling of, of sort of warmth that you feel around them. And all of a sudden when you get up to them, you realize that it's you, that you're just much older and you seize the opportunity as anyone would and you chat with your future self and you just sort of ask what they've been up to and while they're describing to you what it is that they've been doing you're feeling this overwhelming sense of pride and and you're so happy to hear all the incredible things you've done and you're hearing things that maybe you hadn't even conceptualized yet but you would just love to have accomplished in those years and when you finally finish talking with your future self you're feeling warm and good and you know that you know that you've had a massively fruitful life and you're just so excited about everything that the future holds and I think that that way of thinking would contribute to a more open-ended sort of thought surrounding what it was that you were trying to accomplish and I think that I think that this document is a little bit about dreaming and a little bit about where you want to go you know when when a massive ship takes off from dock they, they've got the course so plotted and I think that it's sort of foolish that we imagine that we're going to have these huge, incredible big lives without documents like this. So it's, uh, yeah, does that help? Oh my God, yeah. And the cool thing about that, there's a couple things that I really love. First of all, um, it takes the premise completely away from business and just, it's more about who do you want to be in 10 years, which I think is how you should approach this document. Um, I always love the ship analogy because like, you know, they leave and they've got a full crew They've got a captain, they've got a course, they've got fuel, everyone's got a job and everyone knows how to do their job and the captain's there overseeing it. If you took that same ship and you removed the crew and the captain and the plan that was associated with them- Turn the engine on? Turn the engine on, I guarantee a hundred times out of a hundred, they would never make it to the vastly far away place they're trying to get. But here we go through life like this, just kind of being like, eh, you know? Well, and not just that, but real estate, is it's difficult water to navigate. It's, so it, it, it's not like this is a beautifully flat ocean with like, you know, only really one way with the wind behind you. Like, it's kind of grandy out here, guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, no kidding. You, you yeah. want to have a plan. And this is your life. It even supersedes your business because this talks about everything that you want to accomplish. And face it, I mean, you know, leaving the spirituality out of it, 
we got this one really awesome shot right now that we're doing this second. Life, life. Like let's let's have a plan that we're chasing at least. I mean, the majority of the things on my one three five ten. If I got to half or a third of these, my life would be phenomenal. Like just like you said, even better than it is now. So I can't even imagine. So the fact is, by having a, a huge plan, like I, I think that a lot of people fail to plan because their their fear is that they're not going to be successful. And that might be true, but I mean, like I said, if if I even had even a quarter of, of, of my plans, like. It's going to be an incredible life. So, okay. I think Bill Gates has this else. quote that I've just been losing my mind over recently. He says, "Most people overestimate what they can do in one year right. and underestimate what they can do in ten. And I think that a big part of the problem that people have in business is they keep on setting one-year goals. So it's like, oh, I'll try to get to twenty. Didn't make it to twenty. I'll try for twenty-five. Didn't get to twenty-five. Yeah. Let me try for thirty. But if you're like, in ten years, I want to be writing five hundred. That's going to give you a lot more depth to the way you look at your planning. Another thing that I'll just say about this is that, um, again, you can use any planning documents you want, but at Keller Williams, there's a series of documents that you can use. You know, um, this document very easily could feed into the GPS for any of the particular ones that you want to accomplish. So uh, from there, you can make decisions surrounding your economic model in order to support some of the stuff on the right hand of the side or the left hand side of the page. If uh, you know, it's not lining up and the activities aren't there, your 411 would get extrapolated from the demands of the economic model. So it's, this is sort of the mother document that takes care of all those other documents so that every decision that you make ultimately should become pretty clear if you have this well done. So, and, and if you get, you know, slightly off course along the way, or you see that shiny object that yeah. so many of us are attracted what to. What should I do? Yeah. What a great way to have you know, a document you can go back to that's like, no, that is not part of my plan. Yeah. Not doing it. Totally. So general rules, I mean, definitely starting with the end in mind makes a big, uh, makes a lot of sense. Totally. I think, um, use the SMART acronym. So don't put, you know, get better or something vague. It needs to be uh, specific, measurable, action oriented, trackable, and, or realistic and trackable. So specific, um, Measurable, action-oriented, realistic, and trackable. I don't think we need to explain those. You know, if you can't say that every single statement on here matches all of those criteria, work it until they do. Yeah. Period. Um, any other words of advice? Uh, you know, if we're drawing to a close here, I I think um, I think the most important thing is just get one on paper as soon as you can and just start just sort of start try to get something in every box totally it's a live document you have the permission it's your life to change it at any time that you feel like um and then the only other thing that i'd say is that we want to thank um thank the front seat community because everyone is so giving and we love all the comments and everything that we're getting for this particular video we would be so honored if if you've done a lot of one three five tens if you have heard something that you think would be of, of value for people to hear it would be really great if you could take just a couple seconds and write it in the comments or let us know so that if we need to do a follow-up video sean and i haven't used these as well as some other people have and we'd be honored if anyone who thinks they have anything to contribute could please do so because we really feel like this is the cornerstone of some of the some of the really epic value that that keller williams can bring and not just for keller agents but anyone who wants to well that's what we're this. trying to do at a yeah. really high level like it's how we started the video saying like this is what we've been trying to and we're trying to turn our business into a business that people receive this kind of coaching when they start working with us and the higher level we can do this not only are you know we're going to be in a better likelihood to achieve our goals but we can change the lives of the people we're doing it with totally so so really anything that you can contribute we'd really really appreciate and uh maybe we'll do a follow-up video or we could do a video of sean critiquing my one three five yeah that'd be awesome cool thanks front seaters hope that helps and uh if you want a blank template or if you're doing one and uh, you want to shoot it off to me and get some feedback, totally. we always love to chat. Yeah, so yeah. keep us in the loop. We're here to help. Awesome. Have a great day.